talk about the love of God revealed in the Holy Bible. It's Sunday. Um, it's an incredible day today. And I see this sign. We hope you have a wonderful day in the historic uh, Niles district. I live in Fremont. Um, I've experienced salvation. Uh, 30 years ago, God touched my life. I was born and raised here. And God has done something incredible in my life that I want to share with you. It's called a testimony. It's called a, a record or a report, something. I'm a, living, I'm a living epistle or a writing that God has delivered me from uh, my sin, my rebellion, really my pride. All of us have pride. You know, pride is, is really rebellion against God in, in many forms. But all of us have pride. It's our human nature. The nature of man, that's why we call it a dog-eat-dog -dog world. That's why it's a rat race. And God describes the heart of man in the Holy Bible. The things that I'm going to tell you are not my own opinion. <clears throat> They're not my own ideas. It's the gospel that I give to you, what Christ has revealed to us uh, in the Holy Bible. These things right here. These things were written that you might believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, the Savior and that believing you might have everlasting life. I, I want you all to receive the free gift of eternal life that is in Christ Jesus. I've received the free gift. I don't, I deserve hell. Man, I, am a, I was a rebel, man. I did all kinds of evil. Man, I hated my neighbor. I sold drugs to little kids and then God. Kevin. Kevin. <laughs> That's good, buddy. And then, and then, God did a work in me and I was delivered and I threw the marijuana away, dealing drugs. I, I, stopped, uh, I stopped doing that was wicked in the sight of God. And now I want to tell you of the power of God and the joy and the peace and the hope I have in what Christ has accomplished on the cross of Calvary. The, the, the gospel. You know what gospel means? It means good news. I'm here to share some good news that God wants to make peace with you. Isn't that not good news? Have you made peace with God? Are you ready to die and stand before Him? Are you, are you ready to, to uh, answer to Him? I am because of Jesus Christ died for my sins. Uh, and I hope you all come to this revelation today. Man, I hope uh, God would give you, young man, a revelation of God. You need God has to give you a revelation of God. And if God does not give you a revelation of himself, uh, yeah, he, oh, Brian, I think you need to pay attention too. Uh, I, I don't, I don't want to see my neighbor in hell. I don't want to see my neighbor in hell. I mean, you don't want to see your friend in hell, do you? You don't want to see Brian in hell. Oh, uh, yeah, I want to see him in the kingdom. That's it. Now, what is the kingdom? The kingdom of God, where there is, where the glory of God is, where the, where God and his beauty and his wonder and his majesty I mean, he is, he is indescribable, and here I am trying to describe God, a loser like me, trying to talk to you about something so breathtaking that if God appeared right now, I'd fall as a dead man on the ground. I mean, who can, who can describe the greatness of our God when we just stand in awe of the Grand Canyon, or we stand in awe of the seven wonders of the world? Oh, no, I love you. I don't love you. I don't know why. I, God bless you. God bless you. I hope God blesses you. See, I, I believe that we should love our neighbor. I don't think we should cuss each other out. I, I just don't think that we should be that way. Uh, but that's our human nature. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, man. And, and I think that when God would get a hold of your heart and, and take that heart of stone, that bad attitude, that's how I was too. I used to cuss like a sailor. Oh, I used to lie, I used to cheat. I, I had sex out of marriage. I did all those things. I, and then God forgave me. And, and I just wanna tell him thank you. Thank you for, I deserve hell. I deserve to go to hell. And I don't understand the love of God, but I'm gonna try to communicate it to you today that you might experience the love of God. That you might experience the grace of God that the power of God would come upon you and deliver you out of the kingdom of darkness. So you're either walking in the light or you're walking in darkness. I used to walk in darkness. I used to be a child of the devil. I used to think only of me, I, mine. 
And, and that's, why, that's why we have police officers, peace officers. They keep the peace. They keep law and order. Uh, because we are lawless people. We do not obey God's law. And we, and we do whatever we want as long as we don't get caught. But God in his grace and his mercy and his favor has come to you today that you might hear the truth and that the truth would set you free, that we might give you the good news that God says, I will make peace with you. And my son who suffered and died on the cross, the one who took the punishment of sin, your sin, my sin, I believe. He is the one that demonstrated his love. He is the one that laid down his life. He is the one that was buried and rose from the dead. That's why Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And whoever believes in me, even though he dies, yet he shall live. I believe, even if I die, I'm going to live. I, I, every man has eternity in his heart. Every man and woman knows they're going to live forever. The question is, where are you going to live forever? When you die, will you enter into paradise because you're a born-again Christian, because Jesus Christ is Lord of your life? You have recognized your sin. You have confessed your sin. And now you go and sin no more. Oh, I'll tell you, when Jesus Christ comes into your life, oh, he changes the way that you dress. No longer are you walking around with skulls and flames and death all over you. No, no longer do you worship the devil and on the highway to hell. No, now, now you're changed. Now you made peace with God. Now you, you have access before him who sits on the throne and his majesty. Most of you do not have peace with God. The Bible says that the wicked, the ungodly, the unrighteous, those who are rebel against God have no peace. What is peace? Peace is, peace is that quietness of soul where your conscience isn't bothered, where you don't have to drink wine or smoke marijuana or, or be a workaholic or an alcoholic or, or uh, oh man, all the addictions that man suppresses, suppresses the pain, the wounds, the scars, the boredom because they have no peace, they have no rest. They don't know who they are, their identity, where they're going. They think money will satisfy them. A boat, a house, all this, a hairdo, a tattoo. Whatever it takes to satisfy this unrest, the man is not at rest. You're not fulfilled. You're empty until Christ, Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, you make peace with God. You confess your sin, and Jesus Christ, who is faithful and just, will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. This is good news, people. There is no way your sins are going to be blotted out unless you come to Christ in faith, believing, receiving his mercy and his kindness. This is not difficult to understand. When God gives you a revelation of his beauty, of his greatness, of his love, of his goodness, then you will dress differently. You will. I'm all about weight loss. No, I, I want you all about Jesus because he is the meaning, the center of life. What is life? What's the meaning of life? Money? Huh? What? What's the meaning of life? Oh, I'm living in that life because Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. I've experienced life. Life is in a person. Life is in the character of God coming within you, the character of God, the resting place that you were created to rest in God. Oh, I'm resting in him right now. That's an abundant life. That is prosperity. See, the wicked do not prosper because money is not prosperity. Vacation is not prosperity because you get older and you die. You know what prosperity is? Oh, when you rest in God. Oh, when you experience Christ. When your sins are blotted out, you have a clean conscience. You are walking in a relationship with God. You're friends with God. You have one-on-one -on -one access. He's a wonderful counselor. He comes and reveals in the midst of pain and suffering his kindness and goodness. And that's why I'm out here, because I want you to taste and see that the Lord is good. I want you to experience the love of God today, the mercy of God that is new. It is new today that you and me can experience something new about the creator of heaven and earth, the one who made you, the one who wants to reveal. I mean, just one little speck of him will cause us to fall down and worship him because he is incredible. He is incredible and none of us can compare to him. He is the greatest. We are not. We need to humble ourselves. See, when you compare yourself to the wisdom, the immensity of God's greatness, we are nothing. We have nothing. We can do nothing. 
Without Christ who gives us life and breath and godliness, without Jesus Christ that holds all things together by the word of his power, you are nothing. You have nothing. It is God's goodness that you exist even today. And now here we are in the midst of God's goodness, in the land of the living. And here we are listening to the spirit of the living God, the Holy Spirit, come and minister Christ to us. Are you going to give heed? Do you have ears to hear what the spirit of the living God is saying to you personally about your sin, your rebellion, your disobedience, your bad attitude? Will you come and allow God to heal? Allow God to restore. Allow God to renew. Allow God to change you. Allow God to reconcile you back, to redeem you, put you back in your rightful place, in your rightful condition. Because right now the devil has ripped you off. The devil has lied to you. Lucifer has told you a lie. And he has come to steal, kill, and destroy you. Lucifer, why does the devil want to destroy you? He's not your friend. He ain't hanging out with you. Why does the devil want to destroy you? Because you were made in the image of God. You were made for the glory of God. You were created to reflect all of his greatness. But he wouldn't know. No, you're not reflecting it right now if you use those filthy words. You're not reflecting it right now if you use your pride and you use your own ways and your own will. No, we need to draw near to God and he will draw near to us. You need to cleanse your hands, you sinners. You need to purify your hearts, you double-minded. You need to be miserable and mourn and weep and let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. You need to humble yourself in the presence of God. That's what happened to Lucifer. Lucifer, the devil, Satan in the kingdom of God, got prideful like he could take God down. And he was cast to the earth and tempted Eve, Eve, to, to break God's law and say, you will be like God if you eat of this and you will have the knowledge. Oh, you will know all. See, you have fallen, America. You have fallen from the grace and the love and the greatness of our God who draws near to you today and says, draw near to him. I'm telling you, you are a vapor that appears for a little while and then you vanish. You're not even in control of your life. You were born here, maybe in Fremont. I was born in Castor Valley. And I didn't choose that. It was the sovereignty of God, the providence of God that I have three brothers and three sisters. My mom didn't decide if she was going to have a girl or a boy. You can't do that. God is in control and how he creates you and the, gifts, and the gifts that he gives you. We call that his sovereignty. But do you understand? He knows when he's going to take you out. God gives life and he takes life. God wounds and he heals. And today, God could require your soul. Today, you can meet your maker. Absent from the body, you are in the presence of the Lord. Do you understand that it's appointed on the man once to die and then the judgment? God has given you life and breath to enjoy him forever. But when you reject his love, his mercy, his kindness, and you harden your heart, and you take the throne of self, and you rule your life, and you do what you want when you want, and then God requires your soul today. There's innumerable ways you can meet your maker today. God could say it's over. It's up. That's your time. Time is over. Maybe today it's for you. Maybe today you can have a heart attack, get in a car accident. I mean, there's innumerable ways you can meet your maker today, and you're not prepared. How many of you are prepared to stand before God? How many of you are prepared? How do you get prepared? Do you know how to get prepared? How do you get your name written in the book of life? When God opens up the books, will he find your name? Jose, will he find your name? Are you there? Are you there? Is Peter there? I don't see Peter. Ada, how do you get your name written in the book of life? How do you prepare to meet Jesus Christ? Oh, God has revealed it right here in the Bible. Oh, if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. You must be born again to enter in the kingdom of God. You must be born again to even see the kingdom of God. And this is serious, people. This is a matter of life and death. This is a matter of a blessing or a curse. When you die, it's over. When you're in hell, it's over. When your name, you can't find your name written in the book of life and you are cast into outer darkness where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth, 
when God binds you up hand and foot and he's ready to cast you into hell, you're going to say, wait, God, I believe. I believe. I'm sorry.